Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Jake James Lugo, and I do a lot of great gaming content here on YouTube, from reviews, let's plays, and all types of stuff that I know you're gonna love. A real big thanks to Kid Shoryuken for bringing me on here to talk gaming with all of you guys. I really appreciate it, Jim. This is gonna be a lot of fun. But enough dilly-dallying right now, let's get into the game that we're gonna talk about today, and that's The King of Fighters 2000. If you love 2D fighting games, you honestly can't go wrong with just about any title released by SNK. The King of Fighters 2000 was released for both arcades and home consoles worldwide in 2000, receiving a number of different ports in the years that followed. Sadly, however, this was also the last game that SNK released before its financial troubles and first bankruptcy back then, which affected the game's development. The result was a few bugs and glitches that pop up from time to time, but nothing too drastic to ruin the entire experience. The game is a continuation of the NES saga in the King of Fighters franchise, if you follow the plot across all of the KOF games, this is the second part of that saga, focusing on K-Dash and some of the other characters involved with Ness. The story could be a little confusing if you're just jumping into the series now, but most of your focus will probably be on the gameplay more than anything else. <laughs> Now, I haven't always been a big fan of the story in the KOF series, but I do appreciate the visual style and just the overall aesthetic of the KOF games, especially the personality that's oozed by all these different characters. I feel like there's a lot of different things for every single fighter that someone could resonate with, whether it's their cool special moves or just the clothes that they wear, their attitude that they have, there's something there at least for everybody. But besides all of that, it's really like I mentioned before, the gameplay that gets a lot of people over to the arcade machine to play the King of Fighters, and this one is no exception. The core fighting of the KOF series hasn't changed too much in this game. You still have your 3 on 3 battles and single fights you can participate in, alone or with friends. There's also an arcade mode with various character endings you can earn by completing it with different teams, as well as a party mode that acts like a survival mode for those who want to keep fighting. KOF 2000 improves upon the new striker system introduced from the previous game, allowing you to call in an assist from another character during the fight. Only this time, you have a lot more options on who is the assist character you call upon. The roster is pretty big, with a variety of different teams and fighting styles to choose from, both new and old characters. If you've played any other KOF game, then you know exactly what you're getting into here. It's definitely not a drastic improvement over the previous years, but it's still a good game that gives you a lot more KOF action to enjoy. <laughs> Now, I do find some of the controls tend to be a little stiff in the King of Fighters 2000. It seems to be a common problem with most of the KOF games. But after spending a little time with it and playing a few matches, you'll get into a real good groove doing different special moves and all these other super special moves you can do. With all that being said overall, can I recommend that you guys play the King of Fighters 2000? Yeah, I still think it's a good entry of the series, even though it doesn't drastically change a lot about what the series has already established thus far. The fighting is still pretty good, there's a lot of great characters that are oozing personality, the visuals and the backgrounds are pretty dope, and there's a whole bunch of great interesting stuff that you can engage with with the King of Fighters. 2000. And there you go, that's all I got for you guys about the King of Fighters 2000. A uh, big thanks again to Kit Shuriken for bringing me on here to talk gaming with you guys. If you liked what you saw and you really enjoyed this entire review, make sure you guys check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash gamers with games channel. I got a ton of different reviews, let's plays, unboxings, top five videos, and a whole bunch of other great gaming content I know you're gonna love. And don't forget also, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to Kit Shuriken here on YouTube. He does a lot of great content, especially with all of his experiences out in Japan and all the cool stuff that he sees. We even did a nearly one hour conversation over at Long Island Retro Uplink. We did a full panel about some of his adventures out in Japan. It's a great conversation. Some people have said that it's probably one of the best interviews that they've seen. I highly recommend that you check it out when you get the chance. Thanks again, everyone. Hopefully I will talk to all of you again very soon. Peace out and stay epic, everybody. Here comes a new challenger. Hello everyone, Xander Scullion here, and I want to thank Jim for letting me on his channel and talking about a Genesis game I absolutely love, 
called Amazing Saga Mutant Fighter, one of my favorite beat-em-ups on the Sega Genesis, and without further ado, let's get into it. Now the story is pretty straightforward, it's based on Nona Guy's Amazing Saga mech manga, which is considered a combination of Nona Guy's Mazinger and Devilman franchise. Players assume the role of Koji Kabuto welding the Mazinger Z armor to fight against a powerful bio beast led by God Crazier Hell. When it comes to gameplay, Amazing Saga Mutant Fighter may seem like a run-of-the-mill side-scrolling beat-em-up with six stages to plow through, leaving all the carnage behind with an amazing soundtrack, and you might be right with those assumptions, but this game has something special up their sleeve. The boss battles is where this game takes on the 2D fighting game genre for a whirl. It looks like a totally different game, and honestly, as cool as it is, this is where the game starts to kind of fall short. The controls change, and not for the better. What was once your special button is now a guard button, and you've forgotten all the sweet moves that you were pulling off. You also find yourself against some incredibly cheap bosses that hurt you more than you can hurt them, and they have a longer range. The later bosses also love to guard everything, and there's nothing you can do to guard crush them. But of course, if you try to block, you'll still take some damage. And the fact that you'll have to replay all the boss battles at the end of the game before fighting the true boss, is a major problem. These fighting selections are sloppy, difficult, have awful collision detection, and end up being a real black eye for an otherwise solid game. Now I absolutely love this game, despite its small drawbacks with the boss battles, I feel like the, the animation is awesome, I really love the soundtrack, it's got some of the best sprite work I've seen on a Genesis game and I highly recommend it. So to give this game a score though, I would give it a solid 8 out of 10. It's, it's a, around average, maybe slightly above, but I, guys, if you find this game out in the wild, definitely check it out. I highly recommend it. And I want to thank uh, Kit Shurukin for letting me on his channel and talk about this game. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and as always, happy gaming. Do you like barbarians? Do you enjoy slashing your way through hordes of enemies, riding dragons, and generally just being a badass? Well then, this might be the game for you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Warrior Blade, also known as Rastan Saga 3. Now, me personally, I've always been a fan of the Rastan series. Uh, well, to be fair, not the entire series. The first one is a classic, obviously, the second one, not so much. We can, uh, I think we can safely just forget about that one. And the third one, I had heard about back then, but had just never gotten a chance to actually see it in person since it was never released stateside. What a shame, too, because it was one of those multi-screen bad boys, kind of like X-Men or Ninja Warriors. The real tragedy here is that Warrior Blade wasn't ever ported home to anything except the Japanese PS2, and that was back in 2007. Exclusively in Japan, too. No Rastan love here for the West. It did come home via Taito Memories 2 Gekon, one of several Taito compilations on the PS2. A really interesting feature of this particular port is the option to change the screen size from widescreen to a standard 4x3 mode, which I'll be utilizing in this review since I can't find any other footage of it on YouTube. The game consists of four starting levels and you can pick where you'd like to head at the beginning and after each level is completed. What's cool here is that depending on the order that you choose, you'll end up with a unique penultimate stage and boss before heading to the final battle. The 
everything is here as you'd expect. The graphics here look awesome with highly detailed and super large sprites. Also, quite a lot going on at any given moment, and the game rarely has any slowdown issues or anything like that. Uh, to be fair, the enemies in this game hardly present a challenge. It's mainly about just putting you in front of large numbers of enemies and bombarding you with them than it is actually making the individual enemies difficult. May power be with you. Luckily, you do have a few power-ups at your disposal and even a summoner that can be called into battle to do big damage thanks to some of his awesome screen-clearing magic. Sound and music is also really good here, although it is a bit limited. There's maybe less than five songs in the whole game, but they are all quite good and are super memorable. The grunts of the bad guys and the clashing of steel sounds excellent, as do the roars of the dragons and the gallop of the horse. It's all pretty well done, and the game handles quite well and never gets overly frustrating. The bosses are all pushovers, but some of them look really cool, like this zombie that spawns skeletons while yelling, help me, the entire time. So yeah, all in all, Warrior Blade is an awesome game with great visuals, soundtrack, and control. It's a tad short, sure, but it is fun while it lasts. If you want to play it at home, the import PS2 is the only option, unfortunately, and Taito Legends 2 Gekon runs for around 200 bucks these days. Here's hoping that one day it'll all be re-released as part of some sort of Rest End trilogy. Now that I could go for. As always guys, I'd like to thank you all for watching and of course commenting. Big shout out and thank you to Kid Shore Yukon for having me on today to talk about the always awesome Warrior Blade. And until next time, stay classic. Here comes a new challenge. It's nearly everyone's favourite holiday, Halloween, so let's take a look at the modern remake of spooky PS1 favourite Medieval, exclusive for the PlayStation 4. Let's start with some cold, hard, rigor mortis ridden facts. The game came out in October 2019 and is a single player hack and slash adventure and it's one of the new remasters that made their way to the PS4 with the likes of Crash Bandicoot, Spyro and Carmageddon. Yeah, you didn't know about that one, did you? You play as Sir Daniel Fortescue, a knight who was the first one killed in a battle to save the kingdom of Galomir from the evil sorcerer and general bastard Zarok, who is now back and has unleashed all kinds of unspeakable evil across the land. So Sir Daniel is resurrected and given the chance to redeem himself so he can finally earn his spot in the fabled Hall of Heroes. As soon as you press start, you'll see that the game looks fantastic. It's got a great art style and all of the characters and enemies have loads of personality to them. Sir Daniel himself suffers from not having a lower jaw so he can only mumble, but you always know what he's on about and he's got a surprising amount of expression on his bony face. The environments have the same amount of love put into them too, with clear inspiration from Tim Burton. As to the characters, there's a great variety in the levels too. Starting of course in a graveyard, you'll make your way through the likes of zombie infested towns, underwater caverns, haunted forests, and even an undead pirate ship. There's always something new on each stage, which are all filled with their own enemies and bosses, as well as a fantastic soundtrack that sounds like something straight out of Danny Elfman's locker. In fact, sometimes Sir Daniel gets so fond of the levels he's in that he gets stuck on them, literally. Though I have a feeling that's not meant to happen. It's just that getting stuck in or on the scenery is so common that it often feels like a feature rather than what it really is, a disgusting unwanted bug. The levels themselves aren't particularly big, but they are fun. You always have an objective and you'll need to find keys and solve simple puzzles to complete them. Also, make sure you defeat any enemies that you see in the levels. Beat a certain amount on each level and you'll fill a magic chalice which is hidden somewhere on the level. Find the chalice and you'll visit the Hall of Heroes where you'll be given new weapons or health upgrades, which you'll definitely need. You'll need to revisit all of the levels a few times if you want to unlock everything that the game has to offer, especially as the only real new addition here are some lost souls which you'll find near the end of the game, who ask you to help put them to rest by going back to previous levels and completing side quests. And once you've helped all the lost souls, you get to unlock the PS1 version of Medieval, which is always a welcome bonus. What doesn't help here though is the camera, which is usually functional at best, and it didn't get the upgrade it needed in the remake process. You have very limited control of the camera, and each level has sections that have a fixed perspective, but you don't get any warnings 
period it's going to change, so it can be very jarring, especially as the controls change to accommodate the new view. And speaking of the controls, they did need some more attention. Arguably, the remake's controls are almost identical to the original game, meaning that it brings over a lot of the problems with it. So Daniel has a strange momentum when he runs that can make precision jumping tough, especially coupled with the dodgy camera, and the combat in the game really needed some work. As mentioned, you get a few different weapons to play as, like swords, axes, a bow and arrow, and even some magic. But combat boils down to hammering one button until you or the enemy dies. There's little to no enemy knockback here, which means that if an enemy is in the middle of attacking, you can't interrupt them, so you either have to hope they die before the animation finishes, or that you have enough health to take the hit. When you're fighting multiple enemies, you end up just running in circles, hammering the button and hoping for the best. It's a real shame, and became more annoying than fun in quite a few instances. With that being said though, it's still a really fun game that keeps you coming back to it. Other than the Lost Souls, there isn't really anything new here, and it's disappointing that Medieval 2 isn't anywhere to be seen, which is surprising as Crash and Spyro both included three games. Overall though, it is a very faithful remaster, which is a good and a bad thing, as it does bring a lot of the flaws over from the original. However, it has so much charm and the game is a lot of fun to play, and also it's just great to look at. It is worth checking out. Now all that's really left for me to say is thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Two Guys One Game. We also have a podcast which you can find wherever you get your podcasts, including Spotify. And why not check out my Instagram? I've got over 400 reviews of modern and retro games. Just search for The Reviews Brothers. And we'll see you next time. Hey guys, Nabil here from Neo Geo Now. Now first of all, I want to thank Kid Shoryuken for this amazing opportunity and thanks to him I'm here to talk to you about a game that is very special to me. I'm of course talking about Samurai Showdown and no, I'm not talking about the original one and if you don't know what that is, it's a game that came out in 1993 and spanned different sequels, it's from SNK and it took the fighting genre by a storm as it introduced for the first time weapon based fighting mechanics now the game of course was very popular and if you were not around in the 90s it was quite a big deal both in the arcades and at home with its different home ports now fast forward to 2019 and snk finally revived this dormant series with samurai showdown the game came out to great reviews and it did have some issues and some nitpicks it came out with 16 characters but then it did expand and that's the reason behind this review we're gonna see how this game has expanded and more than a year later is it still a great game that you should pick up how's the community how's the net code and above all is it still fun to play now let's get started with the initial review when the game came out it was again in 2019 around june both for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox and was later released on the Nintendo Switch as well as Windows PC recently. The game launched with 16 characters which looked quite bare bone at the time. But luckily SNK did add more characters with two seasons of DLC. Notably the first one was free and it added more characters for free and then a second one and recently a third one was announced. Gameplay wise this was the Samurai Shodan game we've been waiting for. It actually takes from the best of the series. If you've been playing these games for years and you know each one how different it is from the previous one, this game feels like a Samurai Showdown 2 with a mixture of Samurai Showdown 5 Special and those two games Samurai Showdown 2 and 5 Special are definitely and unanimously the best of the series so gameplay wise the game killed it the mechanics are simple yet deep anybody could pick up the game and start playing but to become a master it's gonna take more than that the game offered both an offline mode as well as an online mode. Now let's talk a little bit quickly about the offline mode and it's kind of bare bone by today's standard. There's a story mode but it's not really story mode, it's more of an arcade mode with some minor cutscenes in an ending. It does not really uh, give anything about the plot, it does not explain what exactly is happening. So calling it the story mode was a little bit misleading, again it was more of you know your traditional arcade mode. Now, before the game was released, SNK made a big deal about this AI ghost mode where you actually play, as you actually play the game, supposedly the game will make a ghost image of you, of your play style, and then you can take that ghost and actually 
share it online and fight other people's ghosts. When the game came out, it, that feature was broken and it was a big deal because SNK kept t talking about it and how this is, it is revolutionary. Unfortunately, as I said, it did not work then and it still did not work now. In fact, SNK stopped talking about it. They never fixed it, which was kind of a bummer because they really talked a lot about it. Uh, other than that, you have your basic training mode, you have a survival mode, and that is pretty much it. Versus mode, nothing, nothing special. If you were expecting something like NetherRealm Studios, Mortal Kombat story mode, that is not, it is not here. But the fun part starts in online, and again, with fighting games, the fun is when you fight other people, right? So how is the online? As you know, in fighting games world today, a game lives or dies by its netcode. So how's the netcode for Samurai Showdown? It's surprisingly good. The netcode itself is good. Uh, I still play it on a weekly basis at least. I, I do create some online rooms and have people join in and we play. And it works. It really, really works compared to King of Fighters 14 or other games from SNK which are known for not having great netcode. So, the netcode itself is pretty good. I've had some quite long distance fights and they work fine. And that's also because of the nature of Samurai Showdown. Samurai Showdown is a slow game. This is not your typical, you know, King of Fighters or Street Fighter where you jump in and you do combos and try to win as fast as you can. No. Samurai Showdown, since the first game, is a methodical game. You have you gotta be slow, you gotta think about your next move. So there's no that it, you're not gonna find that rushing down you know combos and super combos so that was that is that is one reason why the netcode even if it's not perfect actually works you can you know you play you don't feel that there is lag it's it's really really good again in terms of netcode but in terms of the online features the online presentation is really lacking the lobbies were broken at first but they would fix them but again i still find some some weird decisions in how the online uh, options are and how you choose your rooms, etc. So after great reviews and about 13 months later, the game is still alive today. As I said, you can still find people online and more characters were added. So we had 16 characters at launch and then more characters were added. Some of them were free. The first season was free for those who ordered the game and bought it in the first week. Uh, there were some, some free characters, just the last DLC character we had uh, is a co collaboration character, but it was actually free for everyone to download, which is which is pretty awesome. And SNK did create some stages. However, for season two, we did not have any new stages. Hoping with the new season three that we're gonna get some cool stages. Now, again, is the game worth buying now? Yes, because Samurai Showdown is really alive. There are tournaments happening, and if it wasn't for COVID-19, we've had we would have an official SNK Worldwide Tournament Samurai Showdown that started last year but unfortunately was not able to complete because of the coronavirus. Now as I said in the beginning, Samurai Showdown is getting a season 3 and we're hoping that some fan favorites that we have not seen in a while are gonna be in it like Genan, Seeger, Nicotine and other cool characters we have not seen for years. I'm also hoping for some new stages and hopefully, hopefully an overhaul of the online modes in terms of aesthetics presentation the netcode is fine as it is but it would be great to get rollback netcode you never know so that was my review of samurai showdown if you don't have it yet go ahead and buy it there are multiple times where it's on sale the community is very much alive and i hope you guys to face you online on samurai showdown neo geo now out